On April 25th, EPA Administrator Michael S. Regan and his tax-fed tyrants at the Environmental Protection Agency released their final suite of standards, i.e. threats, targeting coal-based electricity generating plants. It's a cozy-sounding title for the mandates that will, in all likelihood, see Joe Biden make good, if you can call it that, on his years-old promise to shut down coal plants all across America, as he told us. In other words, it's a suite of standards that stands on the invalid assumptions A, that somehow mankind is causing a catastrophic climate disaster, B, that carbon dioxide emissions are the cause of said so-called climate change, and C, that the feds have any constitutional power to foist these mandates on anyone. Let's soak in and share some key lessons here. Hi everyone, I'm Gardner Goldsmith for MRC TV. Ah yes, this suite of standards that will go into effect on July 8th. Well, of course, this is an attack and it's an attack that just inspired 23 states to fight back with a challenge filed May 8th in the Washington DC Federal Circuit Court of Appeals. The April 25th EPA press release is full of flowery cover terms, and it even claims to be helping the coal, natural gas, and oil energy production sector by laying out set dates by which their plants have to comply with the federal edicts. It's kind of like a mobster telling you the date by which you have to make your corner store compliant with his so-called rules. Hey, nice power plant you got here, eh? Yeah, that's right. Sort of like the Biden mafia. In fact, they offered this in part, quote, by developing these standards in a clear, transparent, inclusive manner, EPA is cutting pollution while ensuring that power companies can make smart investments and continue to deliver reliable electricity for all Americans." End quote. So one can see their self-congratulatory, we're helping everyone lingo, and the sleight of hand in calling their government threats a form of help for the power companies. But what exactly do they mean by pollution? Well, part of their focus is mercury in fumes. Mercury is a toxin, and if emission levels were high enough to cause harm, people could bring tort suits for injury if they were harmed. But the plants already have lowered emissions, and this is the federal government circumventing the old traditional legal standard of citing someone for hurting you and then, of course, taking that person to court. Instead, the government is applying even more strangling prohibitions on mercury emissions than already stand. In fact, as the Institute for Energy Research, IER, reported in 2023, when many of these EPA plans were announced, quote, most of the existing coal plants have already paid off their capital costs, but these regulations could make them pay for costly pollution control equipment, even though the US has a remarkable record of clean air and clean burning energy, end quote. Ah, but the focus of the new edicts really isn't mercury. It's the climate cult's favorite misnamed boogeyman, carbon emissions, which actually means carbon dioxide. And CO2 is not a detriment to people. It also has not been proven to be driving up global temperatures, something on which I've written extensively for MRC TV. Moreover, the Biden administration attack on coal is a continuation of his dark work as vice president. Throughout the Obama years, MRC TV diligently worked to expose the federal government attack on coal as an energy source and its attack on the people who mine, ship, and burn the coal to provide cheap, 
reliable energy to millions of Americans. MRC TV's documentary Collateral Damage, Forgotten Casualties of the Left's War on Coal, is a must watch for people who care about the fates of those who already have been attacked by Obama and Biden. Of course, they were also attacked by the EPA and by numerous politicians who back the federal climate cult. As IER noted in 2023, quote, in 2007, coal supplied about half of all generation on the U.S. power grid. In 2022, that figure dropped to 20% behind natural gas and renewables when combining the generation shares from hydroelectricity, wind, solar, geothermal, and biomass. This year, nuclear power is also expected to overtake coal, dropping coal's share to fourth place. Most projections, however, expect coal to occupy a small share of the market through 2030 and beyond, despite U.S. climate envoy John Kerry's declaration at climate talks in Glasgow in 2021 that by 2030 in the United States, we won't have coal. Analysts expect that challenges associated with bringing new power sources online will help keep some coal plants operating despite cost and climate considerations, end quote. And those challenges to new power sources are monumental, ranging from the problems associated with unreliable and resource-eating wind farms to environmentally disastrous storm-vulnerable solar farms. By the way, the panels for those mainly come from China because the Chinese interests get cheap energy from, yeah, you got it, coal plants. Indeed, what have Chinese interests been doing while Obama and Biden embarked on their quest to kill coal-based energy? Well, since 2022, they've built six times the number of coal plants than the rest of the world combined with CNN reporting that over the course of 2022, the nation was approving an average of two coal plants per week. In a perfectly timed April 14th piece, CNBC reported that Chinese sources accounted for two thirds of new global coal plant energy capacity in 2023. Biden and his EPA want to hobble what is left of U.S. coal exploration, recovery, and energy creation. And these new mandates pile on expenses for everything, from mandating that coal, oil, and gas-fired plants control 90% of their carbon pollution. Again, that canard, that carbon dioxide is a pollutant, to a, get this, 70% reduction in the emission standard for mercury from existing lignite-fired resources, yeah, to wastewater, to deposits of coal ash in the ground. Yes, these all are potential risks, but they can and constitutionally should be handled by private interests, private property, and tortious claims for personal damage. There are complicating factors here, such as state-run or multi-state-run energy grids or state-granted energy provision licenses, and even the fact that states grant monopolies to corporations to provide energy. They're all problems to consider when looking at how easily private parties can seek damages for emissions from such energy providers should the providers cause damage. But putting the federal government into a position of overseer means that we all fall under their control. That their pie-in-the-sky fascist plans to impose a green agenda on us will harm our wallets and the capacity of energy providers to do what the market actually wants. And of course, we can see already that these diktats put U.S. business interests at a disadvantage compared to nations such as China. Biden appears to be fulfilling a so-called pledge, but it's a dark pledge. And unless these 23 states can stop the EPA, yes, the EPA will continue to dismantle a sector of energy supply that if Biden and the EPA would actually leave them alone, if Biden would abide by the constitution and the Fed stayed out of it, well, these 
opportunities for us to get cheaper energy would be more widely available. The coal energy sector could grow and offer us cheap, plentiful power for centuries. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please like and subscribe. Please find us on Rumble where they don't censor us. Of course, we are still on YouTube and they do censor us there. Please double check that you're still subscribed. Please share the videos far and wide. And talking about far and wide, if you get the opportunity to open up a new tab, please visit mrctv.org. Check out what the whole team is doing there. Check out the MRC store and please consider donating to the Media Research Center. Always good to get your feedback inside Facebook. And of course, you can find us on TikTok and on Instagram and on X. If you want to find me on X, I'm at Guard Goldsmith. And at Gab, I'm at Gardner Goldsmith. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. For MRC TV, I'm Gardner Goldsmith. I want to invite you as my guest on a very special once-in-a-lifetime, seven-day post-election cruise in the Caribbean. Caribbean. It's going to be a blast.